Hey everybody, welcome back to The Shed. I'm Troy Shaw, and with me as always is Dave Griffiths. What's up, Dave? Not much, Troy. Uh, enjoying the last day of spring, or actually the last day of spring in the winter before it gets cold again, but uh, it's been a crazy winter. It, it sure has. We're, we're happy to be back. We've uh, kind of been on hiatus for about three months, so I guess everybody had a good Christmas and holidays and all that good stuff. Oh, sorry, I'm plugging my light. And you have a boy that's walking now. He's walking. Man, it's been that long. He's a baby walker. <laughs> yeah, he looks like a zombie. Wait till he can turn those doorknobs. <laughs> then, then your life gets interesting. <laughs> All right, well, let's get on with the show. We have uh, some guys in the shed from the band Soul Drive. Jerry Davis, who is a uh, lead singer and guitar player, and Clint Walker, who is a uh, lead singer and guitar player. You guys kind of share the stage back and forth, so welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello. Good to be here. All right. Yeah, we... Uh, I guess the first time we saw you, it was uh, Sands Clint. It was at the uh, David Zajac benefit, and uh, you, <laughs> Jerry, you guys came on late. Yeah, we did. And uh, started playing, and me and Troy. I don't know. It was God. It was after midnight and cold and cold. <laughs> but there were fires about. But you guys, you had hopefully had some heaters on stage. But anyways, uh, me and Troy looked at ourselves, and you guys started playing. It was like. Ah man, shit! We gotta watch these guys, and uh, we were definitely impressed, and definitely looking at each other, saying uh, we got to get these guys in the shed, and um, that was an interesting night. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it was, uh, it was definitely a, a, a good cause. Uh, I've known Zajac from around '89, you know. Oh really? Yeah, known him about that long. Uh, didn't know him well then, but got to know him over the years, so it was. Uh, you know, unfortunately, he's not doing so well. But uh, uh, it brought yeah, our a bunch thoughts of, and prayers are with that guy. He's yeah. a great guy. He's been here twice. He was our first episode, and then we did a later one, kind of a after he, was, you know, went, went through his, his medical first. problems and stuff. We kind of had him back in here again to talk about that. But yeah, he's a he's a cool guy. I've known him a long time too. So yeah, I watched those uh, that y'all did. Those those were those were good. Those were cool. So talk about the talk, when did Soul Drive get together? Uh, Soul Drive has really just been uh, together for a year and a half. Started out uh, as a trio, really, really more than anything uh, as out of necessity. I would uh, say power trio. It's a power trio. <laughs> yeah. yeah, blues with the rock mixture, power trio. And uh, Louis laying down the mean back. Uh, yeah, Luis Feliciano on the bass and Corey Porter uh, just rocking on the drums. Th- those guys have been with you since the beginning, I guess. Since the beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah about a year and a half. Uh, so yeah, just wanted to, you know, I played in the Waco area and Central Texas area for many, many years, and uh, then uh, done done uh, my own, you know, rock band thing back in the '90s, a group called Peace Pipe, uh, and we we had some decent success in Waco. Got to open up for some cool artists, and then uh, played in country bands uh, a lot, off and on since then, and uh, got to missing the rock and the blues, and, uh, and I, I decided after meeting Corey and. Uh, really, Corey Porter first. Yeah, uh, uh, he's a great drummer. Uh, meeting him, uh, that's when I decided to start a, a rock blues, uh, you know, project again. So, so I assume, I assume, like a lot of us, you know, kids and family gotten away for a little while, but now that I, I think you told me that your kids are, or, or I don't know how many kids you have. Yeah, just uh, just a daughter. Just a daughter. Yeah. She's a little older now, yeah. so you can get back out and and, and go out and have some fun. And yeah, play. I was in my thirties. I was just busy working a lot and yeah, and uh, in the in the shed. <laughs> working on on, on my, my guitars, not Wood out shit. playing. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but now that you have a new member of the band, Clint. When how did uh, you guys get together? Well, uh, I, I think he should kind of tell how he got here, and then we'll uh, go from there. You know, I got got in uh, in the Clean Temple area, Central Texas area, in August, and uh, being a musician and traveling all over for probably the last twenty five years of my life. Um, you know, the one, one place to find out what's happening in the music scene is go to the music store. And I uh, w- walked into Guitar Center and I uh, walked right up to the guitar tech at the time, uh, John, and uh, talked to him for a while and then I met Jerry. Uh, a couple of nights, maybe the next night, I don't remember, it was a jam. It was a jam night down in uh, Harker Heights area. And uh, Soul Drive was, was at the jam and did their thing and amazing, put on, put on a great set. Uh, then, then we just kind of start talking. Uh, Jerry and I, a uh, couple days later, made it to Texas Tour Gear to where Jerry's working at the music store, 
and uh, then uh, we just kind of hit it off from there. So, you know. w- were you a uh, jarhead in Okinawa right up to that point where you uh, moved in? No, no, I, I, I'd, I'd retired uh, from the Marine Corps in 2011. Okay. And uh, did about a year in New Mexico. Came here to Texas, where I'm from, down in Bay City. Okay. And I was there about six months, and my wife got a job back in Okinawa. So, uh, she was like, babe, you want to go back to Okinawa? Well, hell yeah. So, back to Okinawa we went. So, uh, oh, really? I've been there for the last three years. What, what brought you to back here then? Uh, you know, it was time to leave Okinawa. Um, her, her contract was, was uh, ex- expiring. So uh, it's like, well, where do we go? You know, here we are in, on, uh, in the Far East. Okay, well, we go to Texas or we go to Michigan, where she's from, which I didn't want to go. It's too cold in Michigan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She didn't want to go there. It's too cold. Well, even uh, Ted decided Michigan yeah, was yeah, enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we... I, being a guitar guitar maker down on the Gulf Coast is not a good place. It's conducive to just guitar making. It's so humid down there. Yeah. It's hard to get your glues to, to cure. It's hard to get finishes to cure. So, uh, And where I'm from, there's a little music scene. I need a little bit bigger music scene. You know, yeah. so... Uh, and I guess this would be a little bit bigger... Yeah, Maybe. much bigger actually. <laughs> much you know, bigger, yeah. it kind of belies Waco. You know, doesn't get enough credit for having a music scene, in my opinion, because there's so many phenomenal artists and bands, and you guys are like the 22nd yeah. guest that we've had in the shed, and we've got so many more we want to do. And when you really consider the size of Waco, to have so many, you know, incredible musicians and great songwriters, and just a a, a real, you know, what I consider a semi-vibrant music scene. I just wish there was more people that would go out and see it. Because right. I think yeah. we have uh, an abundance of musicians and bands and we don't have enough of a, a live music audience. Yeah. But music, you know, when we yeah. go out, we see a lot of the same people over and over again. So Yeah, yeah. yeah, per, music, per, yeah per capita, per, you know, the musicians here has always been that way. Yeah. I, I, so many I've come across over the years. I went to I went to MCC uh, in their uh, commercial you went through music the program, program okay. years and years ago yeah. and and there's always been a lot of great musicians uh, that come out of the area. Uh, just, you know, not necessarily always, uh, you know, a vibrant uh, community that really wants to go out and see live music. Uh, the, the, the people that really do, uh, they really love it. You know, right. but. I drag Troy's ass out all the time. Of course, he's a family man with a wife that, you know, keeps keeps the strings pretty tight sometimes. Love you, Anna. But anyways, um, you know, we we try to go out, and I, I'll go out by myself sometimes just to go see some bands, just because. You but know, the band has to be worth it, and you guys are definitely worth it. We came out Friday night to the backyard to see Thank you guys you. play, and three great sets. I mean, I, I got to admit, I left probably during the third one, but um, it was sound was good. Um, you had a good crowd, and I, I like what the backyard's doing. Yeah, yeah. It's a, oh, very yeah, nice. It's yeah. nice place. You know, Brian. You know, he, he loves he he loves talented artists and yeah. talented guitarists. And uh, for a singer, you know, he, Brian being you know a, a, yeah. a front man and a singer, he loves guitar players. I mean, you know, me and him spend lots of shows together. Just recently went and saw um, John Five. Oh, down, really? Down in Austin, me and him did. Was he playing with? Uh, no, he wasn't with. No, he was doing his solo oh, instrumental really? yeah, stuff. Yeah. You know, so he, he, you know, he loves, he loves that. John stuff. Five is incredible. He is incredible. Yeah. Uh, well, Brian's kind of like Ozzy. He always has these badass guitar players that play with him over the years. You know, <laughs> like and Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy's just yeah. Jeremy's badass, phenomenal. You know? And you know, we we enjoyed. We did a little acoustic thing over at Cinema. Um, it was one of our remotes. We've only done a few remotes, but um, yeah, they they whipped it out and. Um, Brian used to bring in some really great bands at cinema, and Troy and I had seen a bunch of them. And, you know, something like Monty Montgomery there, for God's sake. Oh, yeah, I he's mean, bringing him again. Oh, uh, really? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's uh, great. And then in Back to the Backyard, that's what I was getting at. Just him loving great guitar players, yeah. always has, and, and great musicians. Well, I hope... Uh, uh, he's bringing in, you know, some cool stuff there. We need to keep that place open. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. 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 My favorite part of the backyard had to be the limousine. Oh yeah, the one with the yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know how that thing's gonna be like in two years from now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. With just cut the roof off yeah. and, and yeah. put yeah. some, yeah. Th and there you go. Hose the bird poop out yeah. of there yeah. once there in go. a while. Yeah. But you know, yeah, it's a great, uh, great little. Um, <laughs> that could be know. that. That well, that could be a uh, you know that could be a great place for in between sets for yeah. the band that, yeah. to, to, to hang, hang out, out yeah, and yeah, then yeah. come out of you know. That's where the hookers and blow hang out. Is what I heard. I don't know that for a fact. I don't know. Somebody, somebody not on a windy out. night. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I guess we'll get down to some questions here. You know, I when we saw you guys open up, um, or not open up, but perform the other night, you guys came straight out with um, Bright Lights, Big City, mm -hmm. which is great. You know, Gary Clark Jr., love that guy. Um, that was a cool song to open up with, and uh, I imagine you're both fans, and... Mm -hmm. and uh, Outside of Gary Clark, who's you know blown up, is there anyone else that new on the scene that's still doing that style of music that's got you guys kind of you know perked up? Oh, I've definitely got a couple. Uh, cool thing about you know uh, just our relationship, which is fairly uh, uh, new and ongoing. Clint and I, you know, we just we we're, we're just we're old school blues guys all the way to the new progressive, you know, blues guys, and and we're just just true blue. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, you know, if you want to say that, blues fans, and uh, you know, so we go all the way back to some greats that, and that's the cool thing about blues; it always gets reinvented. Uh, it's like you know, like Gary Clark's got a lot of original tunes, but he's always going to throw those great blues covers from Jimi Hendrix to Gary Moore to to Jeff Healy to uh, you know, uh, name some names. Uh, Albert King, yeah, Albert King, definitely. Albert, King. Albert Collins, yeah, Albert, Freddie, Freddie King. King yeah. I mean, so those are, they always bands. That's what's cool about the blues. It's just this brotherhood that you always, you know, every blues band's going to always do tunes from the '40s and the '50s and the '60s, and they may give them their own vibe. And we do a lot of that, but uh, yeah, definitely Gary. Yeah, Clark you guys Jr. take fan. those old blues blues songs and kind of make them your own in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. I heard a, a lot of you know, like all of your songs on re, on the Reverb. Uh, Website is that what's called Reverb? Yeah, Reverb, Reverb Nation. Reverb Nation. Reverb Nation. That's Reverb Nation. what it is. Um, Reverb yeah. Nation. Yeah, that's uh, you know, that's kind of been always a thing of mine. I like you guys put your own spin on those songs. That's, that's yeah, you do badass. some uh, some cream stuff on there and um, a lot different. Yeah, yeah. a lot different. Yeah. And, you but know, you guys write your own songs too. Talk about that. Have you guys written these songs together? Because uh, you, you know you've been had the band for a while, and I'm mm. sure you have some original songs. But not together. Not yet. But not I, not I, yet. I've got I've got a handful of originals, and and I'm kind of bringing two. The group and uh, we we did one the other day, just kind of messing around and and he we actually did Lies. it on Saturday night yeah, on stage. <laughs> really? Saturday yeah. night, it was like so, all right, let's do so, this. You know, gonna, so, did you just make yeah. up the words as you well, went along, or no, th this particular song? We'll actually do it later. <laughs> we'll, we'll do this particular one later. <laughs> Will the um, words be different than you sang the yeah. other night? No, it won't. Okay, no. Uh, but because we haven't had a lot of time together, I will make stuff up on the spot, yeah. and I just hope that I can remember it if it works. <laughs> so uh, we, got, we got one that we've been messing with, well, I've been messing with, and they've just kind of been riding along with me on it. And I'm, I'm grateful. <laughs> well, you get an iPad they let up me. there, so you know at least he's not like Elvis, make yeah, a yeah, fool out yeah, of yeah. himself and forget the words, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah my iPad is my friend. And you know what? I, I forget <laughs> the words of my own songs before I do anybody else's songs. Yeah. Because you know that that muscle memory is there when you're singing. Well, what's Jimmy good? Hendrix what's good or, about singing yeah. your own songs is nobody really knows the words yet anyway, so you can just make some shit up. Right, yeah. exactly. That, that's what I yeah. used to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the two people that knew my songs after we were done, they'd be like, "You sang the wrong words." I'm like, "Hell, I don't even know the words of my own song." <laughs> They're just like freestyle hip hop guys. Yeah, really. yeah, pretty much, yeah. pretty much, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> no, that's 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 always been part of the blues, though. Somewhat, yeah, yeah. it's definitely you got. You're always going to have, you know, a, a, a large percentage of your show is going to be rehearsed and and planned and coordinated. But, but but even then, sometimes the solos are are, are twice as long based on based the, on the energy, yeah. the energy in the yeah, crowd, exactly. uh, uh, and that's the mm -hmm. improv that's yeah. always you know and that's, part that, of blues. That's a good band that can do that too, because I've played with some people that don't get that at all. Yeah, you know they don't know that. Hey, when I'm, still, I'm still playing a lead here. We're not yeah. going to the next part. Well, yeah. you know when when it's when it sounds good and it's working, you know, I think Jimmy Page and everyone. Clapton and all those guys would extend it another eight bars or sixteen bars or whatever. Yeah. yeah. When it was going on, and, and that's what was great about those bands, is it wasn't like the same. Yeah. 
progression, same timing, same lead every time. You know, if it got if it sounded good, just stretch it out and make it happen. And you sure. guys, you guys had some some good back and forth the other mm -hmm. night. I don't know how much of that was planned. How much of that was just it, feeling it, it? It's never planned. It's it, yeah, it's it's, it's, uh, it's a it's a mutual. Uh, it, it's like we're all dialed in, and and it's it's unspoken. As long as you got a good yeah. rhythm section that knows how to hang, that's you right. can you can go where it needs to go, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I just look over at times when he's in the middle of the lead and just kind of see see if he's really digging in. You know, that tells me like, okay, he's he's got a little bit to go. Well, well I was impressed. He's backing his, out I was of impressed as shit that he broke his string on the first song. Yeah. <laughs> and well, I finished on the set. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, yeah. And, I, and I was like, I was watching you, and you were in your. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that dude's gonna break a fucking string. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you yeah. did, and then you know you didn't like I got a you know, break, you know, and you didn't pull out a backup guitar or anything. You just went in the next song and you play with five. Yeah, you and, know, I mean, and did you, you play a third string? Did did you play? You didn't play. I the played the whole set. Yeah, yeah. I played yeah, the whole I set you did, with a broke string. Stopped yeah. and yeah. you never changed guitars. And I was like. Well, that is a sign of a pro. You know that that's that marine in me. That, that's, <laughs> yeah. that, that's that never give up. That's that you know. That, yeah. That's that that uh, if you will Keep retard on. And, yeah. and it, that's it, that retard spring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, we don't all, use that word when, shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> when that happens, uh, uh, when that happens, it does help to if you do have another guitar player <laughs> or know? another one. Yeah, I mean, another one I mean, sitting or, yeah, or, yeah, a stage or another guitar yeah. handy. Yeah. No, I'm saying if that's gonna happen to me, I'd much. rather rather have Clint over there where I'm like, man, I got this. I only got three strings left. We're good. <laughs> you know, my, my job, my day job is I repair guitars. I, I, I restring. I do setups. I, and But my own gear, oh, it, it, it's like a plumber. It's like a mechanic. It's like a painter. You go to a painter's house, his house looks like crap because he just ain't going to paint his house. <laughs> right, you know, right, I mean, right. and that, I don't know. Uh, well, that was classic, like old school blues when you Pop that E, I think it was that you popped, or was yeah, it? The, yeah, it was. And you popped a high E, and then you just, well, you just had to adjust, play up the neck a little bit more, and 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 just find the note. Yeah, and that that makes note. it interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's like, okay, you, are you on your game tonight or not? But yeah. was, you know, I mean, you, you hit the wrong note, note it's jazz. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly right. You play it twice. Hey, hey, yeah, that's right. <laughs> play the note twice, it, and it's it make it intended. seem like you meant to do it. Yeah, Correct. Right. Chromatic. Exactly. Right. Well, speaking of music, uh, why don't you guys play us a song? Cool. We can do that. That's not good. Let's yeah, I think we're right. Ah, hold on a second. Damn it. Yeah, it's all good. Oh, you want me to talk about the song? Yeah. I got a good story about the song. Yeah, all right. It's great story. You ready? Yeah. yeah. That's right. Go ahead. Uh, you know, this song is a, a little song I like to call Super Friends. Um, when I was 18 years old, I took off and joined the Marine Corps. And the first time I heard this really cool uh, cadence, it was called, uh, well, it was me and Superman got in a fight, hit him in the head with some kryptonite. Hit him so hard, he forgot his name. Now guess who's dating Lois Lane? <laughs> And I've heard that a million times out there running with Marines, left, right, left, and we're singing this song. And after about a couple of years of hearing that and, and, and really getting deep into guitar, I decided, well, I'm going to write the rest of the song. So, uh, so I kind of go through the gamut of all our superheroes and uh, kind of goes a little something like this. Please. 
To a little tip, I broke out the raid. I had to let it rip. The raid was flying, and he went down. Now I'm the only swinger in town, cause I'm a mean motor scooter. Oh, yeah, cause I'm a real sharp shooter. a badass song uh and the guitars you guys are playing are pretty badass too talk about them clint you make you make these guitars i, I do um you know this is something just kind of came out of a necessity uh I, I say necessity being a musician being a guitar player from texas trying to make my own statement um you know you you hit the stage and everybody's got a telecaster everybody's got a strat everybody's got a les paul well i want to do something different and uh it all started out with changing some pickups in one guitar and then it led to changing a neck and then next thing you know i was making my own bodies and making my own necks and my own pickups and uh and it kind of just blossomed from there and so you made the pickups on that uh and, and these two no i didn't uh but those are real interesting pickups they, they kind of look like a cross between like a gretch p90 and a and something else i'm not sure what they are uh the old gold foil, yeah. yeah. Um, that I got these from a company out of uh, Massachusetts, or Maryland. I can't remember really? up there, northeast. And it's basically a P90 with a fancy cover on it. Yeah. But it looks cool, and they actually sound really good. Yeah. Yeah, they sounded good. Yeah, they do. Um, and you know what? I, what I'm trying to offer as a guitar maker is just something that's different. Um, I want to put a guitar in your hands that you can't put down. You know, give you you can't you're not just gonna walk into into a big box store, and and or get on the internet and just order it from one of the big internet companies. This is a complete original guitar. Yeah, There's, you can't go up against those guys, anyways. I mean, you know, it's gotten to the point where it's super high quality instruments that you know Fender and Epiphone, all those that are out there. It's it's really hard to build something for two hundred bucks. It's gonna stay in tune. Well, yeah, I couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah I just couldn't, couldn't do, do it. it. <laughs> Not but for two hundred. You know, <laughs> but you gotta appeal to a different uh, market, right, right? there is what I'm saying. Well, my, you know, my market is me, because I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. My my market is guys like me that uh, want something different, that are not gonna spend five thousand dollars or mortgage the house on a custom P this or Fender that or whatever this this than that, and it's it's an affordable custom guitar because what you got to understand is these are custom 
So when you're, you you know you were bringing in those Fender two hundred dollar guitars, three hundred dollar guitars, those are cookie cutter guitars. Yes. And they're 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 cool guitars, but but these are custom guitars. Well, they're so better it, than what I had to learn oh, on when I was a kid because <laughs> you had to, and back then there were bad Japanese guitars. I mean, my first one was like this. I bought it for one hundred fifteen bucks because. It looked like Jimmy Page's guitar, but it wouldn't stay in tune. It was called a, a Yoho or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was made in Japan, you know. And, uh, of course, J Japan was making better instruments later, and they still made some of the best guitars today. But there were those cheap, what we'd equate to probably China now, those really, you know, like knockoff guitars. But those are still infinitely better than what I was learning on. And you can't... Um, you can't have anything with character and spend, you know, you know, three, four, right. five. Yeah, but and when you put these with apple, apples to apples, his guitars, yeah. they're they're custom handmade guitars with really unique woods uh, and unique looks that would cost you five. Yeah, that one you got there you know, is uh, that's an original guitar. And, and right you talk well, you were talking about Japanese guitars. In a way, this is a Japanese guitar. Yeah, I was in Japan when I made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and not only did he make it in Japan, but it's made out of it, it is Japanese wood. It's a Jap it? it's their national wood. It's a national tree called sugi. Okay. So I'm, I made this guitar out of sugi. But you had that guitar when we saw you at the David Zajic benefit. Mm -hmm. Did you know each other then? No, no. Then how did you have that guitar? Oh well, he he was he was here then. He he had already you know made it to yeah. Texas, but but uh. But you had bought it, but you didn't know him. I mean, no, no, I, I, I bought it after I bought it after we met. Uh, but he wasn't in the band. Yeah, no, no, I wasn't no, in the band. No. I, I wasn't working at the store yet. No, no, I yeah. just uh, you know he he we we got to talk, and then uh, before he started working at Texas Tour Gear. Uh, you know, I said, "Hey, let's put some of your guitars up here. Let me see if I can move them." You know, that's what I do. Is oh, okay. So you know, you, I do all the internet moved, sales yeah, too. Yeah, okay. Cool. And, uh, and 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 when he brought this one in, I, 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 it was there a couple. This of one days. was not going to be sold. Well, it was there. It, 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 was there <laughs> it was there a couple of days, <laughs> but I kept picking it up. Yeah. And and and, uh, and and finally, I just I texted him and, and said, "Hey, holler at me when you get a chance." And he called me and said, "Hey, man, you, uh, we're going to practice tonight." This is before he was in the band. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I said, "I'd like to take." This guitar, which is called the Billy Bow, because it's it's it's, mo it's modeled after Billy Gibbons. Uh, yeah, I was going to yeah. say it looks like, it's like a cross between a like a almost an airline and a Billy Gibbons kind yeah, of yeah. style. You it, know, it, shape, was, uh, it was it was a Gretsch guitar, and yeah. uh, um, you know Gretsch came out with with, with the guitar, and then. Um, uh, Bo so Diddley. is that the same profile as the, the, the body shape is? Okay. And, and then I changed headstock, and I took my liberties with a couple the neck joint and things like that, and uh, you know just kind of put myself into it a little so bit. So you're making you know? a necks too? I do the I do the complete guitar. So you do yeah, the fingerboard, yeah. the fretting, yeah, everything. And all I do. Yeah. If I could grow my own trees and harvest them and make the guitars, <laughs> hey, I got if, a bunch of. If I had my own, <laughs> if I could yeah. forge, I would forge my own tuners and bridges and. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I got another yeah, story well, on bridges, gotta, but you gotta uh, say yeah. when. So well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to this guitar, though. Uh, you know, just uh, and I said, hey, I'm taking the studio. I, I said I want to test it out. You know, so took it, took it in the studio. Uh, you can actually check this video out. It's on our YouTube page on Soul Drive uh, YouTube page. It's a practice, and and I did our version of, of Folsom Prism Blues, which is <laughs> it's really true blues. I mean, it's it's not, you know, it's not the country, you know, in country, you know, you know. You know, you know, you know yeah. It's not that, you know, it's just You know, it's it's, it's the yeah. it's the blues. It's and, Gary and Clark doing yeah, the Yeah, yeah, right. exactly what it is. Yeah. And uh so yeah, I played it and it stayed in tune and I love the tone of it and I I recorded that video, put it out. And then the next day, I said, "Hey, man, uh, I want this guitar. How much you want for it?" <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you join the band. <laughs> <laughs> see, Jerry and, and, and guys like Derek Dutton, you know, yeah. those are guys I build guitars for. Yeah, sure. You know, I mean, that it's it, they appreciate what 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 I'm trying to do, what's going into it, and it, it makes me. I, I just feel when when Derek came by and grabbed that that guitar from me the other day, it was just I felt like yeah, a that's a bucks, beautiful man. that Telly style guitar that you. Uh, built for him and you know we we should get Derek back in the shed or or at least get him over here when we have our 25th anniversary party if we my wife will let me do that <laughs> <laughs> well 25th show party and that, and that guitar is so cool because I mean it looks like it's 60 years old and 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 been through been to hell and back man yeah you know and and it's and w and when it was new when he was finished with it that's how it looked yeah. you know uh, so it was a lot of work that went into uh, give, give, making give us a, it. Give us a like quick, uh, uh, you know, 
know, tell us tell us the process of, of making one of these guitars. How long it takes, and kind of kind of how, how how you do it. Um, you know, uh, for me, it, it 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 starts as an idea. You know, I, I get get a vision or something in my head, like, well, I've never seen nothing like this before, uh, or or it's a, a this particular guitar is kind of a telly type shape, but it, 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 a, a color might come to mind or a knob. You know, I mean, it could be something so simple that just inspires uh, an idea for the rest of the guitar. Um, uh, once I get it kind of figured out what I want to do, I put it to paper. I actually draw them out uh, to scale. Um, and then once I'm, I'm happy that all my measurements, all the geometry and all the physics, everything works yeah. on paper, now I'm going to start cutting wood. So do you have, um, you're at the point where you're doing production ones, where you're building jigs, or you just hand making them like the um, You know what, there, there are, there are uh, every body I make, I'm, I make a template of. Yeah. So I'm, I usually make my template first because it's, it's cheaper to mess up on some three or half inch or three quarter MDF than it is, you yes. know, some so you use hundred dollar mahogany. Oh, use I, router on? I use routers, I use bandsaw, uh, okay. I use uh, propane torch, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and there, there is, all that yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. There, there's all kind of stuff. So I, I get my ideas down, uh, once I'm happy with that, um, while I'm figuring this out, I usually have in mind what I want to use for wood. Um, sometimes I might just take a chance, go down to Lowe's and grab something off the shelf and see if that works. It kind of worked for Leo Fender way back when, so yeah, you know, you never know. And and actually, with this 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 guitar, the Sugi guitar, uh, that was a chance I took. And, I, and yeah, what's the, the, the wood again? The, what's the, the wood name? It's called Sugi. And is it a hardwood? Or is it like an alder? Or is it like uh, you a, know, it's actually a Japanese is cypress. Is that Karina kind of thing? It's a cypress, but it's real soft and it has properties like our cedar over here. Okay. And very uh, light. Yeah. It's very light. Light cedar, yeah. Um, so I, I, I get all my hardware, I get all my, my wood in, whatever I'm going to do, and then uh, just let the sawdust fly. Is that a, a wood that's indigenous to Okinawa, or is it throughout uh, uh, Japan? Uh, throughout Japan. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And I wish I had more of it, but, you know, uh, the reason why I kind of looked into the cedar was because the properties are very similar. Yeah. Uh, and so I have a little bit of stash of sugi left, and I'm, I'm holding that real close to my chest, on you know, because... Wait for the right person to come yeah, along that wants you know, to yeah. Are there yeah, any, yeah. Uh, you know, kind of boutique guitar makers that you're... You know, interested in modeling from or? Um, I mean, there's obviously know, it's blown up. There's a lot of uh, you know smaller boutique makers like amps and pedals. Yeah, and yeah. Stuff like you know, that. and, and it, lately, I, I'd say within the last ten years, uh, there is a huge influx in of independent guitar makers. Uh, and and I'm I'm gonna drop a name right here. A guy named Sully. He's from Dallas. And Sully is making some amazing guitars. If you ever YouTube Sully guitars, Sully's Garage, he is doing some amazing stuff. And I like his attitude. I like how he attacks, you know, his builds. I like his enthusiasm. Uh, Scott Walker, no, no relation. Uh, I got to meet him. He's up in uh, Santa Cruz, California. Amazing, amazing craftsman. Uh, he is on the high end of the boutique scale. Yeah. And make some fabulous stuff, and that's inspiration to me. <clears throat> There's a guy here in Waco, uh, Rick Shaw. You, you ever heard of him? He makes. Uh, I've heard of him. Eight Shaw guitars. He makes. Mm -hmm. He makes some some guitars too. That's yeah, Clint. Clint's cool. got another background. The short time I've known him, uh, the, the you know just discussed and conversations and stuff that brings it with the, that comes up that we're you know got in common. But uh, but he's 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 an old hot rodder too, and his dad is a hot rodder. So yeah. you know, take, I, know take I noticed old, these guitars look pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they look like hot rods. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. So so you know, his dad refurbishes old hot rods, and he did yeah. he's done that and raced and, and 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 I've got that you know my folks' background. My dad was a mechanic, a hot rodder, and my uncle refurbishes and restores you know vintage guitar uh, cars, not guitars. Yeah. I like and, the, and, and, I like the pin straps and, 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 and they ride cars, guitars. Those are Racing yeah. stripes, yeah. Right. Racing stripes. Yeah, but that's exactly yeah. what these yeah, are. That's what they, I meant. They yeah. look like they could be hot rods, yeah. and, and that's right. I yeah. think. And that, that kind of looks like Billy Gibbons because yeah. he always had those, you know, kind of. Uh, well, he had the Bo Diddley one, yeah. but you know, he he had these, you know, he was the cosmic collector of like unusual guitars. S speaking of Billy Gibbons, okay, so I made this guitar, and I just thought this is something that the Reverend Willie G would play. Yeah. 
And I was in Okinawa when I made this guitar, and it was red, and it was sugi wood, and it just looked like something he would play. So on one night after many cold ones, <laughs> you got I, the courage. I thought, man, it, this I'm. I'm gonna Mr. find him, Mr. Gibbons on Facebook. Karen, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I found. Okay, this is the Billy Gibbons. Okay, Mr. Gibbons, blah blah blah. Uh, you know, I I wanna I wanna send you this guitar. I don't want nothing. Just I just want an opportunity to send you this guitar. Yeah, crickets. <laughs> 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 and I know, it, you know, it, it it would be an honor. Uh, it, you, uh, inspiration. Uh, Bowling guitars. Wow. Those are the guys that are making the guitars for Billy yeah. and, and Dusty. And John Bolins makes makes him and his son make awesome, awesome machines. And yeah. that's that's kind of some of my inspiration, you know, well, you guys know, like that. That's it's good but, to have something to, uh, you know, aspire to. Yeah. As yeah. far as, I, and obviously, I mean, there's guys that have been making guitars for years. There's guys that are, like, you know, even in Texas, you know, Collings and companies like that that make these amazing guitars. Mm -hmm. And you know they, they get a premium. They're over two, three grand. Yeah. But um, seems to still be a market for custom, unique, one-off kind of designs that aren't you know two thousand dollars. Exactly. That yeah. are playable, stay in tune, and all that kind of stuff. And that's that's my my price point is is right there where the working musician can afford a custom guitar and. It's so custom that it's I can I can carve that neck to his profile. You know what do you like? Well, I like this. I like this. I like that. Fender and I can neck, I can tweak neck, that guitar. Yeah. yeah, I can tweak that guitar to make it fit that individual. And before I build a guitar for anybody, I have to talk to him because I have to know who that person is. And I can kind of tie that into the guitar. Yeah. You know? Tomorrow's my birthday, Dave. So I <laughs> well, happy birthday, Troy. I expect a custom made guitar from you tomorrow. Well, I got some. Uh, I got some picture hanging wire over here. Well, you know, we are in the shed. There, there are some things that we can use here. Yeah, look at all know, that wood. Um, Could you make me a, a, a guitar made out of a door? Um, I, I, I would. Well, you know what I can make you. I could go back and watch the video of it. Might get loud. I don't know if you ever saw that movie yeah, yeah. with Jack um, White and Jimmy Page yeah, yeah. and yeah. the Edge. And at the yeah. very beginning of the movie, Jack just basically takes a hammer and a nail. Strings up some. Hey, that's all I need. Strings up. <laughs> all I need, man. Strings up a log like basically Les Paul made and mm -hmm. and uh, plugged it in. Yeah, I yeah. could. Uh, you got some spray paint? Is that spray paint over there? You can. We're paint not gonna it. spray paint it. We're oh. gonna piss on it. Oh, <laughs> it. <laughs> We're gonna give it a natural patina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He wants. A, he wants a natural stain. <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I'll be working on that tonight. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm not going to work well, before tomorrow. we before we close out the show. Uh, so where can people see your guitars? You got a website or anything or, or you know, you can find my guitars at Texas Tour Gear. And that is in Belton. That is in Belton, Texas. Yeah, I don't know if we mentioned you guys are out of the Belton Temple area, but you guys play all of Central Texas. Have you, you know, ventured out to Dallas and Austin? Uh, and we, we play south some, uh, not not north, but south and and then some of the future endeavors we have doing uh, obviously, some of you don't have any South by Southwest gigs lined up in a couple weeks, do you? No, 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 <laughs> yeah, we don't. That's kind of a but, zoo. but we have stuff down south in Pflugerville, yeah. Round Rock. Uh, you know, okay, those cool. areas coming south up. South and Southwest. Yeah, they're they're going that area. But, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're planning on doing a, a definitely a bunch of recording. I'm working on, uh, you know, I'm buying a little place out uh, close to Belton Lake, right off of Belton Lake, and I'm I'm gonna we're gonna remodel it and. I'm Build putting, a studio. I'm building a studio that'll be done this summer, and it's going to be set up to do, you know, you know, live at Soul Drive's place, you know, cool. that kind of stuff. And we're gonna cool. we're gonna record our own videos, but we're also gonna bring other artists. Like I plan on getting Derek Dutton in there as guests. Uh, I'd like to get Brian in there. I'd like to get you guys in. We play. We and, play. And, and the place is gonna be really really cool. Dave plays with me all the time. It's gonna have that. <laughs> he plays with me. That's how. Uh, that's right the, here in the shed. We were talking about pee stains earlier, man. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> yeah, that's just more like a cat barking. <laughs> no. Uh, 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 you know, but but uh, it'll be a real cool place to uh, uh, to do those types of things, yeah. and do that live at Daryl's yeah. house kind of thing. Yeah, and, and, I love that show. I have to watch. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. all of them. But, so we're uh, gonna yeah. try to do that on a local level. Hey, if you need somebody to come down there and cook like Daryl, I'm uh, as you can tell, I do a lot of cooking around. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. That'd be great. Yeah. It's gonna have, it's gonna have a real cool vibe out close to the lake. But uh, 
but that, our, our plan is to do those to help other people but then you know have really good quality videos for ourselves uh, to, to get into more uh, you know festivals and so you're gonna have and, no and neighbors nearby you can have little jams out there and stuff then right yeah we're gonna yeah. have we're gonna have jams yeah all right cool very cool studio. well hey thank you guys for being here uh, Jerry and Clint from Soul Drive you can check where can we check you guys out you got a Facebook page and a website and all yeah, that good it's, stuff it's all about Soul, Soul Drive Blues so if you google Soul Drive Blues you will get Soul Drive the band uh, at you know Facebook Google YouTube Reverb Nation all those things Very if cool. you uh, if you want to find my guitars uh, Clint Walker Guitars on Facebook Right, and awesome. I, I don't have no website. I don't have anything else. Just I don't think you need a website talks. anymore. Yeah. If, you, if you have a Facebook, I think yeah. you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. So Every, come, come find Facebook me there. Program. Come find me at Texas Tour Gear. Well, when CBS buys you, then you can yeah. go ahead and uh, have a, your own <laughs> and website. I, and uh, when we post this video on our uh, YouTube, we'll, I'll put the links to all that stuff, too. So if you're watching this video right now or listening to this video on YouTube, you there should be links underneath it to every place you need to go. All right. Well, let's, uh, what are we going to hear next? I think I'll, I think I'll do a, a, a revamp of an old uh, 60s blues song, uh, stripped down, kind of acoustic style, um, uh, called So Many Roads. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, this this tune is So Many Roads. Uh, it's been done a ton, uh, but it's usually always been done kind of how the original guys wrote it, uh, which was John Mayhall and Peter Green in the 60s. And uh, it's from Joe Bonamassa to you know all kinds of cats have done it, and they've always done it, you know like you know. Just, you know. So many roads, and that slow, slow, slow blues. Sounds uh, like Joe, Joe, Joe Bonamassa right there. And, and, well, he, he <laughs> recently redid it. He recently redid it, and I was just actually sitting around playing an acoustic rhythm one day, and in the key of A, but a different chord progression, A minor, and I started just singing the uh, uh, the words to this song. So. Uh, so we uh, want to want to redo it uh, kind of our own way, and uh, this is one that we're going to record here uh, pretty soon. We'll take it off the top. Well, let's do it. You ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, 
trains to ride So many roads to close So many trains to ride Very right. nice, very <laughs> nice. Hey, it's been a pleasure having you guys in the shed this evening. Thank right. you very much. Enjoyed it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, you thanks, guys man. are awesome. All right, oh, so thank much. you. Thank you. <laughs> we definitely appreciate it. Thank and you. we're out of here. Thanks for listening to us in the shed. See you later.